You got me shocked. Like, I wasn't expecting that. You're probably not gonna like my reaction though, because... Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi! Today I'm going to be reacting to my subscribers bird cages part 3. This has been well requested since part 2. It's been a pretty long time since I did part 2. So now I did ask you guys to go over to my Instagram and send me your cockatiel cages for me to review. So I'm just going to be focusing on cockatiels today because that is what I know, that is what I love. I mean I love all birds but like... I'm very sorry if I don't get to your cage purely for the fact that you don't own a cockatiel. Like, I'm really sorry. I just feel like it's not really fair of me to give advice on something that I don't really know about. Now, I am not a professional in any single way. I'm just a girl on the internet that really loves cockatiels and I want the best for them, honestly. I'm not here to offend anybody. I don't want to make anybody cry. I am honestly just here to educate people and have some fun. But I also just want to put the idea out there that cockatiels and birds in general are not supposed to stay in a cage 24-7. Usually cages are used for when you can't supervise them, when you're not home, or just for sleeping. And honestly, that's what I use my cage for. My girls are out of their cage most of the time. They just kind of wander around my room kind of thing. So I trust that the people that have sent in their bird cages for me to review today are giving their birds plenty of outside of the cage time. I trust in that, so fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. Uh, so this is my Burb Sushi's cage. He is a pearl cockatiel and has the attitude of of a velociraptor. Though, he is the size of a chicken tender. He has beef with the bell on his shredding toy. We love watching your videos together. He has a little crush on Emma. You go, girlfriend. Oh, so this is Sushi here. He is so cute. I am so blessed to see that photo. Okay, let's review Sushi's cage. I am very excited. Oh my god. Okay, I've just been hit with aesthetics. Holy moly. First impressions, your cage is freaking awesome. The whole green color scheme, you got me shocked. Like, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, chef's kiss, honestly. I've never seen a green bird cage before. That is brand new to me. I can already tell that you've done excessive research just by this first impression. Like, your teal is very spoiled. Good job. All right, let's break this down. So first of all, I love the layout of the cage. I see a cuttlefish bone, which I love. We all know that. I love the use of natural branches in your cage and I am sure that Sushi loves climbing all over them. Like, good job, I love it. I think that's a calcium perch. It could be a cement perch. I'm honestly not too sure, but I do express my concern with cement perches as if they're not made properly, then teals can actually swallow the cement particles and obviously that's not really good for their stomach at all. So I'm hoping that is a calcium perch just for my personal preference. I love the seagrass mat and the fact that all your toys look to be made with natural materials. I love it. I can't say I'm like the biggest fan of plastic toys. I just find the birds would get very bored of them because they don't don't really have any benefits unless your bird is like one of those very unique birds that likes the sound of clanging plastic together but in most cases birds would much rather like shredding toys all that kind of stuff so it's really really good to see that you don't have plastic I am very proud overall I'm in love you already captured my heart with the aesthetics and you've captured my heart even more with sushi's adorable face so 10 out of 10 honestly good job is my cockatiel. His name is Sky, and he is four months old. He has not even been inside the cage as he is still hand feeding, but will still eat his grains and his seeds. His cage is completely empty because he is not even going inside. If I compelled him to be inside the cage, he behaves like he is dying. Okay, let's check out Sky's cage. By the way, Sky is an absolute cutie. It looks like a baby Charlie. That's your twin. My twin. Oh. Stroking her ego, okay. All right, let's check out Skye's cage. Oh, okay, so there's a couple of things that I would like to recommend for Skye as he deserves the absolute world. Now it is hard to tell the exact size of this cage from this one photo, but I assume that it is too small for your little sweetie. Like by the time you replace the dowels with uh, natural branches, add in some shredding and foraging toys, a calcium perch, a cuttlefish bone, like it's gonna feel very cluttered for Skye and she won't really have the desired room in that cage. So teals are very active birds. 
believe it or not. They really love stretching and flapping their wings for an amazing ego boost. So it's really good to have a really big cage for them to do that in. Oh, ego stroke. So in the future, it's probably a lot more ideal to get a cage that Sky can thrive in. I definitely recommend flat cages, which is what I have. Really find it's a good size for cockatiels to be in. I mean, bigger is better. Now, I would also recommend propping her cage up on like a table or creating a stand for her cage because cockatiels are unfortunately prey animals. So for them to feel safe, they require to be up off the ground so they can see their surroundings. But when they're on the ground and they're kind of constricted by a cage, it can give them a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety because they feel trapped, they can't see their surroundings, and it's just overall not really great for your bird. Not really great. It's not good at all for your bird. I mean, which is probably why she doesn't like being in her cage, which you have stated. She probably feels so stressed down there, so I would definitely be propping up her cage on like a table or something much higher than the ground level. You mentioned she's four months old. She also eats her seeds and her grains, which is a good start, but because she's so young, I would definitely recommend starting her on her veggie and palate diet as well. It's so much easier to transition a young bird to pellets and vegetables than it is a much older bird. Plus seed is really, really addicting. You only want to be using like a little bit of seed in your bird's entire diet. So instead of a 100% seed diet, you need to be using like 20% seed and the rest needs to be like your veggies, your pellets, your grains, your fruits, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but yeah, that's all I kind of have to say. Honestly, I would work towards getting a bigger, better cage, filling her cage with some shredding toys, foraging toys, all that kind of good stuff. I know she's very, very young. I mean, at least she'll have it for when she's older because they grow up very, very quickly. I keep saying she, I'm so sorry. You said he. <sighs> really good at it. So here's another one. My cage for my single cockatiel Yuki. He, she is four months old and likes to destroy toys. That's why the cage is half empty by the way. I need to get some new shredding toys. Yuki loves sitting on my shoulder and only flies when it really has to. I love being a human elevator. Honestly, I love being a human stand as well. It makes me feel so useful. Okay, so let's have a look at Yuki's cage. Oh, Yuki is so cute. She has my whole entire heart. I am just gonna say she. It's the first thing that rolls off my tongue. Um, first impressions, your cage looks to be a really good size. I like it. I assume she spends most of her time out of her cage considering the gorgeous natural perches at the front of her cage there, which is awesome. Now it might just be the photo, but I feel a little concerned about the bar spacing of your cage. It does appear to be on the wider side. So teal cages should have the bar spacing of about half an inch to five eighths of an inch. Um, any bigger is really a cause of concern as they can get their wings stuck or even worse, their head, which is absolutely Absolutely terrifying. As I said, it could just be the photo. I'm honestly not too sure, but it's always worth noting just in case. Just in case. I would also suggest putting in some natural shredding toys like seagrass, cardboard, jute. But as you said, she's destroyed all her shredding toys and you're gonna replace them. So I just thought I'd add that in. For me personally, I feel like the plastic toys that you've got there aren't gonna do much, as I stated before. I just feel like they don't give the same stimulation as natural material toys. Now, of course, I'm not the biggest fan of Dow Perches, as we all know by now. They just seem kind of useless to me. They just really don't have any benefits to a bird like natural branches do. So I would suggest putting the Dow down lower so Yuki doesn't use it as much and putting some natural branches up a little bit higher so she's got more variety there. Now, I'm not too sure what is at the bottom of your cage. It looks like the stuff you put on the bottom of a hamster's cage or maybe some pine chippings. I'm honestly not even too sure. It's really hard to tell from the photo. If it's wood from a toxic tree, that will be harmful to Yuki. Paper is your best cage liner. Ever. I mean, it's easy to get. You can use paper, newspaper, paper towels, catalogs, like anything paper, perfect. Bless. And your birds can even destroy it as well, which is really, really fun for them. And you can also monitor their health more easily as you will be able to identify any unusual droppings as it's a flat surface. You can clearly see all the poop. Just to note the long millet spray down the bottom of the cage, I would replace that with maybe some vegetables just so Yuki can forage um, a more healthier alternative because as we know, millet is a treat and it should stay that way. Overall, I can tell Yuki is a very happy little bean and just changing those few things that I mentioned will make her an even happier beans. So I hope I help. Okay, so another one here. Hi Shelly, here's my bird setup. The cage on the left is for my two cockatiels and the one on the right for my four budgies. They're all out of their cage all day, which explains the lack of models in the photo. They all get along well, never bicker. They have a separate play area and a table where they eat their chop and sprouts. 
I also keep an eye on the rope perches to make sure they're not frayed. None of the birds bite on them. Okay, let's have a look. Of course, I'll be focusing on the left cage, so... Yeah, just put that out there. I mean, don't get me wrong, your budgie cage looks awesome from my perspective, but I just don't think it's fair to share my opinion on something I don't really know about. First thing I instantly noticed was all the lovely greenery you are hanging up for your birds. I see parsley, maybe that's basil, I'm not too sure. I also see broccoli, which is amazing, and the sprouts at the top, I love that so much. I'm loving the use of the stainless steel bowls and the natural wooden branches in both of the cages. That is amazing. There's the rope toys. I don't think I need to to mention why I'm not the biggest fan of them anymore but you did say that you're looking out for them so good job but yeah no your cage looks amazing and it's really hard to fault anything if I was gonna make a suggestion it would probably be to put a branch down the bottom like you have in your budgie cage in your cockatiel cage maybe a calcium perch so your birds can keep their beaks and nails nicely trimmed I assume your birds use these cages as sleeping cages because you've got the massive eating area which looks Superb, by the way. I love that so much. But no, honestly, there's no faults. So awesome job. I love it. Okay, so here's another one that is... Oh, stroking the ego. You go, girl. Hey, I heard that you're doing a part three to the cage reacting. This is mine. I hope I can get featured in your video. Thanks, Shelly. You're welcome. You're probably not going to like my reaction, though, because... Okay, unfortunately I didn't get a name for these two cuties, but I do have quite a few recommendations for you because unfortunately this cage is way too small for one cockatiel, let alone two. I'm so sorry, but I feel like everything that I advocate for, this cage is the opposite. But let me fix this for you. Let me give you some solutions and hopefully I can help out today. So first off, let's talk about the hamster water dispensers. I don't really know what they're called, but we're just going to call them water dispensers. I have always known these to be a big no-no. I know they aren't the easiest things to clean, um, especially the little tube that the birds would be getting the water out of. I just would find that impossible to clean. Basically, it builds up bacteria over time and it can make your birds very, very sick. Uh, same goes for the plastic food bowls. So I would just simply replace them with stainless steel bowls. So much easier to clean and keep in good condition. And in all honesty, I just think it's a lot better for your bird. Secondly, this toy it honestly looks like a dog toy never seen anything like it before so it's interesting that's for sure considering a majority of it is made of fluffy fibers which can cause impaction in the crop you don't know what the crop is it's the bit the food goes to before the stomach does that make sense Birds are complicated. This whole thing right here, complicated. So if you get impaction in the crop, it can lead to surgery. Um, if not surgery, then it is fatal. And I would hate it to happen to your cute beans. I would be getting rid of that toy ASAP. It is out into the trash or a dog. It does look like a dog toy. Shredding toys would be a much better solution. Your birds would be so much happier with that. I'd also recommend adding a cuttlefish bone as well because I just like they're perfect. Cuttlefish bird, love them. I'm gonna call them plastic sticks that you have for your bird. There's three of them actually. They are going to cause more problems with your bird's feet than a dowel, which is terrifying. Basically, they'll bring on foot problems much quicker because your birds are standing on these skinny little sticks. They're not gonna be getting the proper exercise and foot strength in their poor little feet. Uh, as a natural brand with like texture and variety and size would give them. So I would definitely recommend natural wooden branches uh, from Safe Tree. Uh, the plastic lining down the bottom is really bad as well. Uh, animals and plastic bags just don't mix. I think the ocean has taught that enough. I would just be using paper. It's really easy to get. Now, I do see a seed diet there as well. As I said before, seed is highly addictive to birds and it should only be about 20% of their whole entire diet. Uh, the rest should be veggies, pellets, fruits and grains. So I highly recommend converting your birds to a pellet diet. Remember, do it slowly. Like, don't just take the seed out put the pallets in, like slowly start converting them over time. You'll just see how much happier they're gonna be. And lastly, of course, the cage. I can clearly see it's way too small, which I said at the start. I definitely recommend a flat cage, um, just because it's gonna be overall so much better for your birds than this tiny little cage that they can't honestly thrive in at all. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I did actually have a little stalk and you did actually have uh, five other small cages that contained budgies. They also had the hamster water dispensers. They also had the plastic lining. I feel like some 
something has to happen here. So many videos on the internet that can give you so much information, so many lists on Amazon or just on the internet in general where you can buy a really good quality cage, good quality toys, get a good quality diet, like all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really easy to access this information. But if you do want help, please don't be afraid to reach out to me. But yeah, you've got to do something about that situation because it's not good. So I really hope I helped um, and you can start transitioning those birds into a much better lifestyle. one more cage because my back is honestly about to give way sitting on this little stool so I'm gonna do one more cage and then I'm going to go to a chiropractor okay so I feel like this is a really great ending so this person says hi bestie sorry for the bad lighting this was taken at night I have a white faced cinnamon cockatiel named Dusty I brought him off a breeder who hand raised him for me the cage is due for a clean but I thought that I would take a photo before I cleaned it so it would be more honest I would love it if you could be completely honest because I want to redo his cage and I need an opinion thank you love your vids okay let's have a look at dusty's camera <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at Dusty's cage. Uh, first of all, I love the size of his cage. It is perfect. Love flat cages for cockatiels. It's awesome. You've got a seed mate. We are twins. I love that for us. Now you do have a rope toy there. Once again, you just got to be careful. Now you do have a little bell at the end of that rope toy and basically bells, they shouldn't be a concern. They most definitely are a concern. Um, birds have been known to get their beak caught in the bell. Are you not embarrassed? OMG. And also if they aren't made of stainless steel then they can rust and that is obviously very bad for our bird. I mean you can keep the rope toy just keep an eye on it but if I were you I would just take the bell off um, just for the safety of little Dusty because he is so cute. Other than that I love the use of the natural material toys that you've got going on there that little swing up the top and then the little bridge down the bottom I love that um, and then your use of natural branches as well I would even go ahead and maybe add another natural branch in there somewhere maybe add a calcium perch a cuttlefish bone I've mentioned that throughout the whole video they are honestly worth it like your bird will love them I do see a stainless steel bowl at the back which is perfect now of course <laughs> I feel like you already know what I'm about to say but the bottom is, it's gotta go. Just remove the hay or the straw or whatever that is. Just remove that. You can just use paper. It's so much easier. And other than that, yeah, maybe just add a couple more shredding toys here and there. Maybe a foraging toy where you can hide some treat for Dusty to keep really occupied in because I do see that he is an only child. Twins. But yeah, just those couple of things that I suggested would be awesome. And other than that, I can tell that Dusty is a very lucky boy. Bless his soul. I love Dusty so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I really hope that I helped some people or even just opened some eyes to some better enrichment for your cage. I don't mean any harm in any single way I'm just trying to help but there was some cages that I reviewed today that did tug my heartstrings so I really hope that I did change some perspectives today if not that really sucks so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video today of course if you would love a part four don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can let me know that you want a part four I'm gonna love you and leave you and I'll see you in my next video next time I upload so ciao for now